It's Digital Day at Canto 2022, and I have the pleasure of sitting with the chairman of the digital group, Mr. Dennis O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien, good morning. The pleasure is mine. It's great to be with you and the Loop team here in Canto in Miami. Thank you. Now, you delivered the feature address this morning, and it was a really insightful address um, talking about big tech and the, the way they operate in the region. You spoke about six big tech companies occupying 62% of the internet usage, but they're doing this for free. Yeah. And so could you break down for our listeners, what is the implication of that? What is the cost of telcos? What is the impact on your region? Well, you know, in, in every country in the region, we build networks, so 4G networks. And 60% of the terabits going over that network is taken up by Netflix, Google, and Facebook. They don't pay anybody any money for that. So we have a very high sunk cost that we have made an investment in a network, but they don't pay us. So it's like owning an airline and nobody paying you to fly with the airline. So if we want to continue to invest in new technology like 5G, uh, we're saying that basically things have got to change because their business model is probably the greatest business model in the world because they don't pay for any distribution but they uh, get loads of money out of people in Jamaica or Trinidad for Netflix, or they sell advertising into all the companies in Jamaica on Google, but they don't pay for any of the, the cost of that network and actually accessing those clients. So it's a very, very simple you know, business model, but it's totally amoral because they're pirating our networks. Everybody's anxious for 5G because they want you know, really great experiences on these platforms. Just explain why it would affect the investment. Well, you know, unless big tech contributes by giving a revenue share to telcos, and uh, already this debate now has taken off in the, within the European Union. The European Union now are coming close to making a decision to make sure that big tech funds the costs of networks in Europe with mobile operators and fixed line operators. The same has to happen in the Caribbean. So it costs us about $45 a year just to carry the traffic that we carry for Netflix and Google and Facebook. So we want to try and recover the cost of that so that we can invest in 5G, right. which is you know, obviously the consumers of the Caribbean want. But there is just no business model yet. Right, and you spoke about, you outlined a few solutions. One of them is unity. Yes. Among the Caribbean, with yeah. CARICOM, with the CTU. What, are you, what do we have to do to make something start the process in the short term? Well, you know, you know, CARICOM is a, is a very tight group of countries. And, you know, there's very strong leaders within CARICOM. So the countries of CARICOM can come together and say, we're going to do this. And we're going to create a new regulatory environment where big tech is going to contribute something mm -hmm. to the cost of the rollout of 5G networks. Don't forget Netflix, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Google, and Facebook don't pay any taxes in Jamaica. They contribute nothing to your health service, to the education of people of the Caribbean or Jamaica, and they wash all their money in a tax haven through a data center, and they ship it back to Silicon Valley. Mm. So Jamaica has ne gets no value whatsoever from any of these big tech companies. They don't contribute to anything in Jamaica. For example, in Haiti, there is no tax at all on big tech because they can't, the government there can't capture the taxes because they refuse to pay taxes. And the whole of Haiti is run for $2 billion a year and there's 11 million people. The health budget is 240 million. Imagine that, $240 million for the total health budget in Haiti. Now, as a, an investor in Haiti or Jamaica, I'm absolutely proud that I pay taxes because it's the right thing to do because yes. my ultimate customers are in Jamaica and Haiti and they would not be very happy with me if I was a pirate. So we just want uh, big tech to start behaving themselves and give up their pirate ways. <laughs> I love that. I'm just switching gears a little. Tell us what's happening in the world of digital. Well, we're rolling a lot of fiber networks. We're fiber to the home. We have a large scale business now in many countries. We're rolling probably 14, 15 countries at this time. Um, and we are 
you know, people are getting rid of very old networks, copper networks, mm -hmm. and enjoying the benefits of having a direct fiber uh, network access. And, you know, they're getting, you know, up to half a gig, a gig of speed, download a movie in, you know, basically one minute. So they're really, it's really, it's a complete paradigm shift for people that want broadband. Nice. And I want to touch on something that you spoke about this morning, which I found to be extremely impactful. Mm. You spoke about a reparations for Caribbean. Mm -hmm. What inspired this for you? I, I made a speech um, about six months ago to Oxford University, and it talked about Ireland's role in the developing world. And when I researched that speech, I discovered that many of Irish, many Irish people were sent by Great Britain to the to Barbados and Jamaica, effectively as indentured slaves. And this got me reading about slavery. I always knew about slavery, but I really read up on this subject. And I think the first thing is that nowhere and nobody has ever apologized to the nations of the Caribbean. And when I go and meet you know, political leaders, prime ministers in the region, and I'm constantly traveling in the region, I always, you know, on this subject, there is a really strong feeling that you know great britain behaved badly but never apologized if you take the case of jamaica the slave owners were compensated not the slaves so about 19 billion dollars in modern money has been paid to slave owners and their their the, the people who inherited those instruments financial instruments all the way to 2015 Everybody that goes, flies into Heathrow, takes a taxi, goes into Knightsbridge, goes see all these beautiful buildings, all these universities, they're all paid by, by, by slavery, yes. okay? Now is the time for this to change. Already in the last two weeks, Holland, which is the first country in Europe, has apologized. Mm. Now that's a big step. Yes. So I've engaged a group of people in London to start this campaign to run this campaign. I think it's going to take two or three years and I, I'm going to fund it. And I'm working with three prime ministers in the region, one a large country, one a mid-sized country and one a small country. And we're, we're looking at how we would do this. And, you know, it would be, uh, if we ask Great Britain for 19 billion back for Jamaica, which is what slave owners got, well, we'd never get it. But if we were to get a certain amount of money every year, which would help continue to transform Jamaica economically and socially, I think that would be a major achievement. This is excellent. I'm very excited to see this roll out. And it's so timely, as we know, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago will be cele celebrating emancipation okay. pretty soon on yeah. August 1st. So this is very timely news. Thank you so much, Mr. Brian, for sitting with us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.